ever heard the saying, change is the only constant thing in life? I bet you have. But do you agree? For me, I agree totally. Imagine just relaxing in your comfort zone, unable to move to the next level from where you are. Now, life, they say, is all about evolution from one stage to another. Well, on that philosophical note, I welcome you to the program, Biotechnology in Focus. I feel very good today. My name is Ifai Okafo. <laughs> All right then, in this edition of Biotechnology in Focus, commercializing BT Cowpea, we intend to open up the investment potentials in this product and the impact biotechnology has made in what I consider as an astonishing short time. Now do stay with me on the program as we ingest new information and profound discoveries on this topic. We'll be with you in a bit. Cowpeas are a staple food and an important source of protein for more than 200 million people in sub-Saharan Africa. They are mostly grown in West Africa on an area of more than 7 million hectares. Cowpeas have been used in this part of the world for millennia, handed down from generations to generations. Cowpeas are regarded as drought tolerant and can cope with poor soils, making them highly adapted to the region. One additional advantage of cowpea is that the leaves and green pods can be eaten before crop maturity. This provides an important food source before mature grain is harvested, acting as a food bridge during hunger gaps between harvests. However, cowpea farmers have been combating with low yield due to major pest infestation, the legume pod borer. The legume pod borers deposit eggs on the flower pods of cowpea. When the larvae emerge, they damage the flower, young pods and seeds, drastically reducing yield. This is the damage caused by pod soaking box. It boils into what? The pod. And this one is likely even to escape the heavy infestation of those uh, pod soaking uh, box. Also causing a lot of damage to cowpea pod. And this one also causes, uh, reduce the yield in the farmer's field. Using insecticides has not proven to be a viable approach. They are expensive and their safe handling requires equipment and expertise that are not readily available to small-scale farmers in sub-Saharan Africa. This is a typical cowpea field where we planted a cowpea that is not protected from any insects. So we planted this cowpea in order to give it the required number of sprays so that we can get seed and we, we gave it the maximum required number of spray, which is eight, the way we have been doing before. You can see with the eight spray, we are not going to get anything here because of the pot soaking box damage. This one I'm holding is 100% damaged by the pot soaking box. One option to address these pests is to develop cow pea varieties with their own built-in protection against the pod borer. Researchers in Africa and indeed Nigeria have been looking for pest resistance in over 15,000 extensive collections of cowpeas and related species. It was identified that uh, this uh, maruka, pod borer insect, is causing a lot of damage to cowpea. And this one is more pronounced of prevalence in Africa. Because in, if you look at the cowpea production in the whole world, Africa has the largest here, and Nigeria is the largest producer, producing almost half of the total global world, uh, production of cowpea. So efforts have been made to identify the source of resistance, at least to improve the materials we have. We assembled different types of cowpea all over the world, about 15,000 different types from different parts of the world. They were assembled in one place, one location, and then we screened those materials. What do you mean by we screen? We subject them to the natural infestation of that insect in order to identify the source of resistance. As a result, Nigerian scientists at the Institute for Agricultural Research at Madubello University are developing insect resistant cowpea varieties that will help increase productivity. Professor M. Ishaku is the principal investigator, BT Cowpea Project. Several efforts have gone into the development of um, an improved material that will resist this insect on its own without having to be protected by any insecticide. 
but all the con conventional approaches yielded no result. I remember uh, more than or up to 15,000 different accessions of cowpea were screened at the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture based in Ibadan. And not a single accession turned out to carry any resistance to this insect. So therefore, the effort to develop genetically improved material was not possible. Until recently, through the application of biotechnology, through the, uh, uh, by harnessing the powers of genetic engineering, a transgene or a gene from a naturally occurring bacteria in the soil was cloned and used in several other crops like maize, whose products are already in commercial circulation in the United States, in China, in Argentina, and other countries. And so with the gracious support of our partners, in particular the USAID, we were able to have access to this gene and uh, were able to make crosses and then developed resistant materials which are being evaluated in the field here. The research is to develop a system for genetically engineering cowpeas, which is a basic requirement to introduce new genes for insect protection. The Bt gene is expected to provide resistance against the pod borer. If the insect feeds on this new cowpea, which is improved genetically, the insect dies immediately and so it will not survive talk less of shedding other generations of the insect. When we got convinced as scientists from the performance of this material, we invited farmers to test it themselves, to see to the performance of this material. Uh, these are the plots being grown by the farmers. They planted it themselves. They managed it the way they used to do it in their own farms. And then uh, we asked them for their opinions. The Bt gene causes the plant to produce a protein that selectively affects certain insect pests, including the pod borer, without affecting other beneficial insects. It has no effect on the non-target organism. Dr. Rose Gidadu is the coordinator, Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology, OFAB, Nigeria. The farmers have been interested, they've shown their interest, and they always have asked us, where are the seeds? Where are the seeds? When can we have the seeds? The farmers cannot wait to plant the seeds. They are waiting. And so, but now, with the Biosafety Act in place in Nigeria, um, the farmers, at least in two years' time, will have access to the seeds and their lives will be improved. Perhaps we need to embark more on advocacy to ensure that these developed varieties are not just lying on our shelves that they are being used by our farmers. Looking at these two varieties, it is difficult to tell which one is organic and which one is Bt cowpea. So this is transgenic and this is non-transgenic. Physically looking at the two uh, seed lots, you see there is no any f uh, physical difference, meaning the insertion of the transient on this has not altered any morphology of the, of the cowpea. So if you look at this, we are here, this is a non-transgenic variety, and this is the conventional variety planted by farmers. So uh, in this case, <laughs> the gene was actually introduced, but not expressed by the variety here. So uh, another added advantage of the transgenic varieties, uh, they mature faster, and this is very, very important with this prevailing climate change condition. Uh, we can call this one climate smart varieties because uh, for instance, for over four weeks now it has not rained in Zaria, meaning there's no way these varieties we feel compared to the conventional varieties. Significant progress has been made towards ultimate aim of incorporating one or more BT genes into cowpea to provide a long-term plan for robust protection. We know what biotechnology is doing in other places, other nations that have em embraced uh, biotechnology are already re reaping huge dividends. So would want to get the attention of our government to focus in that area and ensure good funding for biotechnology in Nigeria.
Sometimes it's really an uphill task trying to bring these issues related to biotechnology to the point where the ordinary man on the streets will understand everything firsthand. Well, that precisely is what we intend to do on this program. And in that case, let's now measure the people's knowledge on the issues at hand. The base we produce in Nigeria is quite okay for the populace. But we only also need for experts where I can get the hard currency. And, the, and uh, if you notice, most European countries condemn our exports, saying that it is low profile. It may not be, it's just to kill the market. But for the need for us to ginger our farmers, give them quality beans to, to, to plant, give them good manure, and this uh, 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 fertilizer for it to germinate properly so they can compete with the foreign beans. Beans is one of the major sources of protein, plant protein in Nigeria, so it's important that farmers should produce quality beans such as to um, get the essential benefits that a good quality of beans is exactly supposed to uh, give individuals when they consume it. Uh, of course, when quality beans is produced, in the long run, uh, the quality of the beans that is going to be exported is going to be far of a higher yield and far better quality, such that there will be better economic prospects in the long run once quality beans is produced by a Nigerian farmers. I feel a Nigerian, Nigerian farmers should produce quality beans because it will serve as um, a revenue base or it will actually um, boost the revenue base of the country. It will um, make even the nation relevant in the global market. Already we are having uh, quality beans in Nigeria, only that we don't have a uh, preservation. So at least to take to make the, the beans to, to at least to last for longer, maybe years or months. If we are talking of exportation, uh, exportation, I'm not in support of exportation and exporting uh, beans now. At least we're supposed to have something that we can eat in the country before we think of sending it outside the country. <laughs>
This message is brought to you by the Nigeria chapter of the Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology, OFAB, supported by the National Biotechnology Development Agency, NABDA. <laughs> Have you ever been to Zinda or maybe Maradi? Well, if I say Nayami, then even if you haven't been to Niger, most Nigerians will pretty much be familiar with the people. We have had a history of living together, perhaps even more than other neighboring countries that share boundaries with Nigeria. Well, on that bright note, I want to welcome to the program my African brother from another mother. But please join me to say Kubeni to our guest, Dr. Abdurrahman Isufu Kolo. He's a Port Bora project manager and representative of African Agricultural Technology Foundation, AATF. And by the way, Kubeni means welcome. Dr. Thank Sufu, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much, sir. I am very happy to be here and spending some time with you. I'm sure this is not your first visit to Nigeria. Oh, no, no, no. I know Nigeria very well. I know Nigeria very well, especially the northern parts. Okay, Dr. <laughs> Sufu, uh, kindly tell us what you refer to as BT Cowpea such that the common man, an ordinary subsistence farmer, would understand. Okay, so I may take a few time if you, you allowed it. Uh, the problem was the African, the research communities on cowpea in Africa recognized there is a special insect we call maruka. Uh, that's the scientific jargon, but commonly we call it pod borer. It destroys flowers, it destroys the pods of cowpea, what you call in Nigeria beans, in beans. common beans. So. Uh, we decide to tackle this problem. It is recognized, it creates a lot of, it creates up to, it causes up to 80% year loss, even complete crop failure. The problem was, for decades, we have been looking for resistance against this insect, and cowpea, God just didn't create cowpea with resistance against these insects. So there is no natural resistance. Then in the mid-90s, people said, okay, in, in the early 20s, people said, hey, since the BT genes have been successively used in maize, in soybean, in cotton to control similar insects, can we get our hands on this gene, on this BT gene, put it in cowpea to save our crops? So the problem is how to get it. So we negotiate, ATF, AATF took the lead, negotiate and get the BT gene free. So we can use it to protect our cowpea and develop cowpea variety. So in collaboration with Amod Bello University, IER, uh, Amod Bello University in Niger Nigeria, and uh, Inera in Burkina, and also Sari in Ghana, we were able to develop really some cowpea resistant using the BT gene, which are very resistant to the, the insect, these devastating insects. Uh, what is the potential of uh, BT cowpea, uh, especially in terms of the drive to ensure food security for the continent? With cowpea, minimum, we, c we can have up to between 10 and 50 percent yield increase in cowpea production. If the insect. For biotechnology. Yeah, for biotechnology. Now, last year I had farmers in ABU at Zaria to sit in our confined environment because we, we are still in confined circle. We didn't, it is not deregulated. Farmers test it, and uh, minimum, if the cow, both in Zaria, in Kano, and in Zamfara. So if the cow pee pressure, in Zamfara, our pressure is high, the insect is high, we are getting 50% yield increase. Mm. So minimum, the minimum yield increase I have seen was 10%. So it goes between 10 and 50% yield increase of cow pee. And you know how much cow people Nigeria imports? Tell us. So please. I am from Niger. Niger is the biggest exporting country <laughs> of cow pee in Nigeria. So I don't want the export <laughs> of Niger to stop. But we can slash down. We can cut down on the imports. Okay, very quickly. What are the challenges of uh, adapting uh, this new technology? Uh, has well, it been tackled? No, the problem was African countries have been following blindly European Union and European countries, I think. BT, BT crops, biotechnology crop, has been on market in the U.S. for since 1995 or 1996. 
nobody died, nobody get sick before eating BT maize or BT soybean. European Union limited the use of BT crops in their country to animal feed. They are the biggest buyer of BT maize and, and BT soybean for animal feeds and their animals are not dying. Mm. And the milk we buy from the European Union is from cow fed with BT crops, with biotechnology mm. crops. And uh, we, it is one of the, tech, it is one, I didn't say the only technology. It is certainly one of the technologies which will help us to improve our productions. Because there are many other problems where naturally you don't find the resistance. You have to look for resistance somewhere. Mm. And one of the biggest problems, I will tell you, is Strega on pearl millets. Mm. There is no resistance in pearl millets. Strega on maize, there is no resistance. And these are problems which are taking 70 to 80 percent of the yield. And in some areas, 100 percent of the yield is gone. And uh, we got problems like this, you cannot find. All the other uh, solutions are double-edged swords. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it works, sometimes it worsens the problems. Okay. So, and now we need biotechnology. It is not the only solution, but we need it to produce enough foods for ourselves. We don't have to follow blindly any other country. Okay, there's this so, uh, area that I, I think we should talk about, and that's the area of partnership mm. between Nigeria and your country, Niger in terms of trade ties or collaboration uh, uh, you've talked about one of them and that's uh, in the no, cowpea no, yeah, you, you're, yeah. you're one of our largest uh, exporters of cowpea yeah. now cow which other areas of uh, collaboration do we have with niger oh, niger and nigeria what agriculture <laughs> <laughs> in agriculture yes oh no there are too many uh, the two countries depend on each other and niger more mm. because in niger we don't have an environment for maize okay so most of the maize we eat in Niger came from Nigeria or Ghana also, or sometimes all the way from Ghana. Okay. Now how is biotechnology doing in Niger? Niger biotechnology is dead end. Because dead Ni end. Yeah, Niger, Niger Republic doesn't have a biosafety laws. Like Nigeria, okay. who adopted mm -hmm. the biosafety laws. Nigeria is more advanced. Niger didn't have any biosafety laws. Do, do, do you think there's a hope for biotechnology in other parts of we uh, cannot Africa within the shortest possible time. Yeah, Ni Ghana is coming up. South Africa is certainly the most advanced. Sudan decided to catch up. Uh, so, and uh, I think countries like Ethiopia, who had huge population, and uh, you don't have much land areas, I also realize they need to speed up food production to catch up. Mm -hmm. And also Uganda, Kenya, all these countries are making quickly to catch up. So Africa, I think biotechnology has a bright future. And you cannot stop science and progress. No matter what you do, you cannot stop it. So let's learn it and see how we can apply it to solve our problems. Thank, thank you so okay. much. Uh, that's a good point okay. where we can uh, actually thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your time, Dr. Isufu. Thank you very much for inviting me. And I will be delighted to come and spend more time with you in the future. <laughs>